It is good, really good. So good to be in this house today, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and to share the Word of the Lord. Let's just lift our hands for a moment. Father, we thank you today that you are here among us. Father, we thank you today that you are speaking to this house according to your purpose for this place being in existence. Father, I thank you today, God, that we have ears to hear what Holy Spirit is saying to your church. Father, I thank you today. We don't need to hear from a man. We need to hear from heaven. Father, you have this place in a very pivotal point in its history. And I thank you right now, Father, that what you're doing in this house is not something small, but it is great. Thank you, Father, that we are coming together as a body. We are being fitted and joined together very uniquely for the, your assignment in the earth. So, Lord, I bless each one in this place today that you would give us those ears to hear in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, with me to the book of Zechariah. I don't have PowerPoint this morning. I don't have three points in a poem. I don't have this morning a traditional message for you, but what I do have... Apostle Neil, is I feel that God has given me a prophetic word for this house from the Word. And I want you to, I know you know this, I may say some things that you already know, but just humor me, would you do that? And I want to emphasize to you this morning the importance of this house. God has a call on you. You're not just a group of great people gathering together to worship Jesus on Sunday morning. God has a prophetic purpose on this house. He has an assignment on this house. You know why? Because He loves this nation. And you are a tip of the spear for the nation of Australia. My prayer today is that I can awaken something in you and challenge something in you to grab a hold of the prophetic purpose that God has for this house. I just saw this morning during worship, God begin to breathe afresh on this place. And He says, don't forget the former things that He's done. But begin to remind God of the things that He has prophesied over this house for you are in a season of release. Does that make sense to you today? God is not maintaining you till you get to heaven. He is refilling, infilling, blowing on the flame that is here to ignite what He had begun in you some years ago. Let's just look at chapter 3. This is a prophetic word for this house. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord has chosen <clears throat> Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Last night and this morning, God began to speak to my heart about this house. And he began to say to me, there are a lot of accusations that has come against this house. Many have declared over you that you are a people before your time and for folks to just overlook you because you will either conform to them or just go away. But God said, no, this house is a brand that is plucked from the fire. And God is causing the seasons of accusation to begin to stop. And God Himself is saying to the enemy, I rebuke you for the lies, I rebuke you for the accusations, I rebuke you for the things that you begin to say over this body. There is a physical shifting, a physical change, and a physical growth that God is getting ready to bring to this house because God has stood up and said, Satan, that's enough. 
Satan, that's enough. Not only is it for the corporate, but for your house, for your home. You as an individual, you've gone through seasons where there's been great accusation against you. You have been accused of things that you have not done. You've been accused of things you have not said. You have been accused of things that have not even entered your mind. And the Father is standing up today as the righteous judge over your life, over your family, over your marriage, over your children, over your business, over your work. And he's saying, Satan, that is enough. No more. It's enough. And I heard the Lord say that he's bringing restitution for the accusations that have caused things to leave your hand. Let that just soak in this morning. I told you I don't have three points in a point. The enemy has been the accuser. Now look who he accused. He accused Joshua, who was the high priest. He was the senior leader in the land. I want you to understand today that God is calling this house to be a leader in the land. Testing one, two. Your times of gathering, your times of prayer, your times of seeing and hearing what God is saying is not to get you through the week, but it's to get heaven in the earth. This is not a oikos. This is not a family gathering, though you feel and you are family. This is an ecclesia. This is a gathering of a legislative arm of heaven that's going to begin to decree and declare what can come into the nation and what can come out of the nation. God is bringing Australia into a great shift into His straight way. He's bringing a shift in this nation into the things that His sons and His daughters have been crying out to Him for. So don't be surprised as you're seeing this shift and wondering what's going on. God heard your prayers. And God is answering your prayers. I'm an American, you know that, and we are not a very prideful people. We're very humbled people. <laughs> Amen. As you can tell from my very humble demeanor, America has been known as a great missionary sending nation. But I heard the Lord during worship this morning that Australia was going to wear a banner of the greatest missionary sending nation. And the things that God has put in your apostle's heart, things he has dreamed of, things he has preached, things he has decreed and declared, and it seemed like it left his lips and fell at his feet. The Lord is saying, this is the season of those things that you sowed with your words are going to be coming about in the nation. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord has rebuked the enemy of his lie. Look at verse 3. <clears throat> now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel. He was in the presence of God. He had a sidekick with him, maybe a bodyguard, maybe someone to make sure he didn't get out of line. <laughs> it was an angel of the Lord that stood with Joshua in the presence of the Lord. And the word in verse 3 says that Joshua, the high priest, he was clothed with filthy garments. I heard the Lord say this morning that He's getting ready to change the garments of the church. That the church in this nation had become entangled with the world. And it was into a place that you could not tell the world from the church and the church from the world. Now I know that it's not every congregation is like that, but as a whole... The, 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 the church in Australia had come into a place where its holy garments had been stained by what it had been rubbing up against. 
And the Lord says that as we stand here before Him, we're not to stand in shame, but we're to stand in expectation of God releasing something that we need in our life as the ecclesia to do what our purpose in this nation is to do. Does that make sense to you today? Don't worry about where you have been. Paul said, forget those things which are behind you and press on towards the mark of the prize of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a shifting in the nation, in the church. There's a line that's being drawn in the sand between religion and kingdom and those that would dare to step across the line out of religion into kingdom are going to begin to receive a new crown. Verse 4, he spoke and he said to those who were standing there, standing before him, saying, he said, Remove the filthy garments from him. This is a supernatural act. It's not us coming to God and saying, God, I'm taking off my filthy garments. It's God recognizing our filthy garments and God saying, Remove those things from him. Now, when we talk about filthy garments, I don't want you to, to look at it as something as just sin or acts of sin or lack of morality. I want you to see it as moving out of the purpose and the plan for God through complacency and compromise. Now, I want you to smile at me for just a minute. I know this is a hard word and it is a tough word but God chose that this word be delivered through you and to you for the nation. We're not just speaking to you, but what we are speaking is going out in the atmosphere and principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places are hearing the decree and the, clair the declares of the Lord, the prophetic utterances of God, and is shifting the nation. He may say, how can God do this for us and through us and in us here for the entire nation? Because your heart is open for the move and you've been praying for an awakening. You've been praying for revival and you've been believing God for His moving of His Spirit. And God said this can be a launching pad today for the shifting of the nation. Amen. Then He said unto them, see, wow. See, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I have clothed you with festive robes. <clears throat> How we know he's not talking about sins, plural, is because that has to do with us personally. Sins, our sins. But iniquity is different. Iniquity is different from sin. Iniquity, without well, going into a, 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 a great teaching on it today, but iniquity is simply generational things that have found their way into your life that have marked you and you had nothing to do with it. Iniquity. It can be visited, the word says, from four generations. I'm not sure what happened 40 years ago in this nation to shift it in the direction that it is in today, but God's saying, I'm delivering and removing the iniquity from your land. I'm uprooting iniquity out of the land. Generations are cycles for God. And God, He would say things like, this generation will not go in, which means the next one's going in. So there are things in 40-year cycles at times that God uses to purge or to cleanse the land. I hope that makes sense to you today. If it doesn't, write it down and study it out. Praise the Lord. He said, I have taken your iniquity away from you and I have clothed you with festive robes. I have put something on you that is not weighting you down, but I have put something on you that is releasing celebration in your life. Any better to go through life celebrating than it is heavy with iniquity in our life. God is bringing us 
to a place of celebration. And this is what he said. And I want you to hear this very closely today. Australia is not going to continue to live from a position of struggle and defeat, but Australia is going to begin to live from the victory of a risen Christ. Hear the word of the Lord today. God is shifting this nation because of the cries of His people. You'll see it in your parliament. You will see it throughout your government. You will see it in your higher education. I just heard the Lord say this morning that He's shifting the universities. There's going to be a great exit of professors and teachers and governors. And God's going to bring in those that are filled with His Spirit. Ah. Uh, you say, how can he do that? The Lord showed me this morning that he was going to dry up their money. And when the money that had been supporting them is dried up, righteous men and women will step up and say, we have the money, but you got to make a few changes. You're going to have to change the way you're doing business if you want our money. You may say, oh, that's hard. That's, that's demanding too much. No, it's shifting righteousness. Does that make sense today? Look at verse 5. Then I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by him. Verse 5 is very significant. <clears throat> turban is this thing that they wrapped around the head and it had jewels on them. We could say that that's a crown. God is putting a new crown upon our head. He's giving us a new realm of authority to step into because the other one was stained. When we wear the authority of man, we become stained. But when we wear the authority of heaven, there is a release of a power that cannot be overtaken by man, but overtakes man. God is releasing a new authority within your midst to be able to, in a festive manner, in a celebrative manner, like we've experienced this morning, to begin to dictate, to begin to dominate, and to begin to release the power and the glory of God in the earth. There is a leaven... There is a leaven that God is inserting into this house. It is not the leaven of Herod. It is not the leaven of the Pharisees. It is a kingdom leaven that's going to begin to produce signs and wonders and miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of Jesus Christ are going to begin to rise up in this church. The Lord says, if you resist Him, He'll begin to inspire you into other places. For His plan on this house is sure. Because your leader has been on His face before God. Mm. How many of you know, oh, oh Jesus, if I mess something up, just fix it next week. The sheep do not lead the shepherd. The shepherd leads the sheep. Let me say that one more time for those that need to turn to the good ear. The sheep never lead the shepherd. The shepherd leads the sheep. There's a shifting that God's bringing in the church that shepherds, pastors, apostolic leaders, prophetic leaders are coming to the forefront. Not as hirelings, but as sons of God, positioned by God to lead God's children into their purpose and into their destiny, unafraid of the church. Oh yeah, that's heavy right there. That's heavy right there. See, religion is about budgets and butts. Yeah. How many butts can we get in the seats? How much budget can we get in the plate? And God's looking for people that are not worried about how many are in attendance 
or how much money comes in the plate. They know that God gives them who they need and He supplies every need they have financially by His glory. Isn't that good stuff? Amen. There's a shift. You're going to see a boldness in those that God has put His hand upon in this hour, in this nation, and they're going to come out and they're going to begin to take the hammer of the Word of God and break the rock of religion into pieces. God's putting a new crown on your head. And it says that the angel of the Lord was standing by. Verse 6, the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua. When I read this this morning, the Lord said to get ready for increased angelic activity. Let me get a drink of water while that sinks in. He said to get ready for increased angelic activity. Angels, as you know, are given to us by the Father to minister to us and to help us in our assignments. They're not to be worshipped or admired or in a place of awe. They're in all of us. Amen. The Bible says, Who are you, God, that you were so mindful of men that you created man a little lower than Elohim? King Jimmy got it wrong. In his translation, he said, A little lower than the angels. Go home and look that word up. That's not the word angels. It's the word in the Greek. It's Elohim. God created us a little lower than Himself. Amen? Which means that you and I have authority in the earth that angels don't have. Angels are given to us, and you need to begin to pray into this and get wisdom in this, study this out, how angels have been given to us to help us in our assignment, to help us in what God has called us to do. And I'll leave that right there. Verse 8, Now listen, Joshua, God is shifting at this point from speaking about Joshua's situation into Joshua's assignment. So as God is dealing with our situation, as He's dealing with where we have been living, He's going to shift us into our assignment. Now listen, Joshua, the high priest, you and your friends who are sitting here in front of you, indeed, they are men who are a symbol for before I am going to bring in my servant, the branch. God said here it's not just Joshua that's going to do it, but it's those who are with Him. Isn't that good? It's not just Apostle Neil that's going to do it. It's those who are with him. For God has brought us in to the season of the body. It's no longer just the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. It's no longer the man of God that's getting all the attention in the pulpit. God is bringing us into a season of body ministry, or better yet, an era of body ministry where His body is rising up and each of us will prophesy. Each of us will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Each of us can raise the dead. Hallelujah. Each of us can go into places where the enemy has had territory and take that territory in Jesus' name. Does that make sense today? God has a call on this house. God has a purpose on this house. And I saw the Lord this morning taking you the arrow and He began to sharpen the blade of the arrow and He began to put you into His bow and He's ready to launch you in to where God has called you to be. And when God launches you, you hit the bullseye. You don't hit to the left or the right when God is the one releasing you as an arrow from His bow. I will, verse 7, Thus says the Lord of hosts. Now, now I want you to understand something. When He says Lord of hosts, the host is the army of God. And I just want to let you know today, you are not the army of God. You are sons and daughters of God. You are kings and priests. Hallelujah. The host is His angelic army. 
The host is His angelic army. The angels of the Lord are the army of God. You are the kings of God that direct and, and dispatch the army of God. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, if you will perform my service, then you will also govern my house and also have charge of my courts. And I will grant you free access among those who are standing here. My God, that's a mouthful. Look at the intensity of that scripture. Look at the positioning that God is bringing Joshua the high priest into. Look at what God is saying over you today. He said, the Lord of the armies begins to speak. And he said, if you will walk in my way. What does that mean? Be a good Christian? Don't drink, don't smoke, don't dip, don't chew, don't run with those that do. That ain't what it's talking about. Keep all the commandments, that's not what it's talking about. If I could just be the perfect believer, the perfect Christian, and if I could concentrate on other people's wrongs instead of my wrongs, then I'll be all right. No, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about. If I could just pray right every morning, if I could just pray in the evening, if I could give my tithe without fussing at God about having to tithe and give my offering, then I'd be all right. That's another sermon. Mm, no, no, that's not what he's talking about. If you will walk in my way, if you will be bold and obedient to do what I command you to do in the moment, when I say go, go. When I say come, come. When I say speak, speak. When I say sit, sit. When I say stand, stand. Jesus said this. Jesus said, I do not do anything unless I've seen the Father do it. I don't go anywhere unless He sends me. I don't say anything unless the Father has said it already Himself. See, in the kingdom, you don't have an opinion. You may have one, but it really don't matter. Your words don't matter in the kingdom. The only thing that matters in the kingdom is the words of the king. And if you change or you alter the words of the king, you can lose your head. Right? The scripture warns us that we should not be saying anything that God has not said. And prophets who prophesy things that God's not saying are held accountable by God. You can't put words in God's mouth. God is saying to us here, He's saying if you will be obedient in the moment, I'm going to require you some do to, to do some things that might make you uncomfortable. I'm going to require some things of you that might make you look crazy in the eyes of the world. I'm going to require some things of you to do some things in a moment of time to go some places that you thought you would never have an open door to go, but when you get there, you're going to have double doors open for you. I'm going to say to you, speak this to this person, and you may say, oh, what about the recompense? What about, what about the return? What about the, what about the, 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 the revenge they may bring in my life for saying it? No, 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 don't worry. God's got your back. God is your front guard. God is your rear guard. Amen. You be bold enough to speak it when God says speak it and then you'll be able to see his purpose fulfilled in your life. And in that last day that you stand before him, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We're not trying to make it and satisfy a bunch of religious people in the church. We want our father to say, well done. Amen. And listen, God is saying to this house today if you will walk in my ways if you will have a radical obedience about you without any question to the father's heart of why he's calling you to do certain things god will open the heavens for you and he will cause you to live under an open heaven If you will walk in my ways and you perform my service, then you will also govern. Govern is a position of great authority. 
God's saying, I will turn, when I know I can trust you, I will turn over the authority of governing my house to you. Man, that's heavy. Well, God, I thought I was in charge already. No, not yet. <laughs> when we're ready, when we are radically obedient to what our Father is telling us to do with His purpose and His mind at hand, God's saying, I will hand over keys to you to govern my house. To govern means to bless it means to release law. It means to release verdicts. It means to release judgment. You will have within your authority in the house of God, not in a church building. I'm not talking about that. But wherever God establishes His presence, wherever His presence is, wherever His Bethel is, God will give you authority in that place. You will be the authority in that place. And when government officials begin to cut up and act like a bunch of heathens, you'll be able to say, the seat that you're sitting in no longer belongs to you. I remove you in the name of Jesus. You may say, can we do that? Oh, yes, we can. And we can begin to see righteous people come into places and seats that wicked people have occupied. God loves Australia. Do you believe that? You may say, oh no, God just loves Queensland. <laughs> God loves the entirety of this nation. And why not from Queensland? Why not from right here on the sunny coast? Let God's glory, let the sun come forth and His glory be poured over the nation. He said, you will perform my service, then you will govern my house. And He didn't stop there. When it says, and also, that means there's another part. It's not just governing the house. Watch this. This is good. But I will give you charge of my courts. Now this isn't a place of praise. The courts is not a place of praise. Look at Daniel chapter 7 sometime this afternoon when you get home and begin to read Daniel chapter 7 where it talks about the ancient of days coming in, and the court was seated. Thrones were, seat, were established, and the courts were seated. And then it says the books were open, and they begin to read from the books that were in heaven what the will of God was for a place, for a person, for a ministry, for a territory, for a city, and for nations. They're written in the books. And when things are not going according to what's written in the books in heaven for Australia, you'll be able to say, time out. This is not going according to what's written in heaven. And we begin to release a righteous judgment from God into the land to bring the nation back into alignment with what the Father has in His heart in heaven. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, He said, when you pray, you pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's not God just doing it Himself, but it is God partnering with His ecclesia, with His body in the earth to help govern in the earth what the will of heaven is. See, when the devil wants to do something in the earth, he needs a man or a woman to do it. Yeah, y'all never seen the devil. Y'all ain't never seen the devil. Y'all thought y'all did, but it was not your mother-in-law. You've never seen the devil just in his rawness. He manifests through people. Likewise, when God wants to do something in the earth, He needs a man or a woman to do it. That's the way He set it up. Read Genesis chapter 1. He needs you. Jesus, Hebrews said, that, that it was not sacrifices and offerings that God desired for Him, but it was a body, B-O-D-Y, that God desired for Jesus to have that He may fulfill what is written in heaven concerning Him. <laughs> Woo! You're important. You're powerful. 
Your body, you being here physically, gives you an authority in the earth to be able to help release what God has in heaven in the earth. And God said, not only will you govern my house, but you will have charge of my courts, and I will, look at this, I will grant you free access among those who are standing here. This is not a picture of something that took place on planet earth. Joshua was standing before the throne of the Ancient of Days. Satan was there accusing him. The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and he accuses us before God day and night. So if he's there accusing us day and night, it's not him, but it's some of his demon cohorts that are bringing you the trouble. So if he's there accusing us day and night, and we're standing there before the throne of God in the courts of heaven, we have to be able to present our case to God righteously for him to give us a righteous verdict. Think about that just for a minute. I will give you charge of my courts... You will have free access here among those that are standing here, which means God will give you a place of authority in His court, in heaven, to release His will in the earth. You'll be able to rebut every accusation of the enemy. You'll be able to identify every covert plan of the enemy, and you'll be able to cut it off because of the crown you have, because of the robe He's put on you, and because of the access that He gives you into heaven. You're not just some sinner trying to make it to heaven the best way you can. You're not just some weak human being saved by the grace of God, praying for God to snatch you out of the earth. You are sons and daughters full of the power and the glory of God. You're full of the same Spirit that raised God from the dead. And He's not here to give you a maintenance in life so you can just hang on till He comes. He has empowered you, and Jesus said it this way. His own words, not mine, red letters in your Bible. Great works have I done, but greater shall you do, because I go to the Father. This is a house full of the power of God, and God is inviting you to a level of authority and a level of release that has not been here yet. And He's saying, do the things I tell you to do and I'll bring you up here like John, Revelation 4 and show you things that are to come and give you the ability to release it in the land. Everybody say the land. Let me read on. I could stay on that verse all day. <clears throat> It says in the next verse, verse 8, Now listen, Joshua, the high priest, you and your friends are sitting here in front of you. Indeed, they are men who are a symbol, for behold, I am going to bring in my servant, the branch. That's Jesus. Verse 9, For behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua, on one of the stones, seven eyes, behold, I am in, I've engraved... An inscription on it declares the Lord of hosts. Look what it says. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. God is saying as there is an alignment that is coming and He places a crown upon your head, and He brings you into a place to where you're saying, God, whatever you say to do, we're going to do it. God says when the church comes into alignment with heaven, He says, in one day I can remove the iniquity in Australia. Did you get it? In one day, evil can be snatched out of authoritative positions in Australia. That means that Homosexual marriage won't be available. Abortion won't be available. Corruption won't be available. All of the darkness that has been ruling the nation out front and behind the scenes will not be available. Because the righteous now stand in positions of authority 
to cause the kingdom of God to come and His will to be done in the earth. Real quickly. In that day declares the Lord, verse 10, the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and under his fig tree. In that day, every need will be supplied. The fig speaks of the promise. The vine speaks of the Spirit. And when the Spirit and the promise are together, there's a manifestation of God's goodness like there never has been before. One quick scripture and I'm done. <clears throat> Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 22. <clears throat> God gave me this verse for this house. Now, I want you to bear with me as I read. I'm not very good at pronouncing these Greek words or Hebrew words. But you got them before you. You can pronounce them like you want to. Hallelujah. Verse 20. That it will come about in that day that I will summons my servant. How do you say that word? That's how I'd say it too. Amen. The son of, what's his name? Yep, you got it right. And I will clothe him with a tunic and tie a sash securely about him. I will entrust him with your authority. And he will become a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Then I will set the keys of the house of David on his shoulders. When he opens, no one will shut. And when he shuts, no one will open. This brother Eli that we just read about in the first verse, he had a very particular role in the kingdom. He was the finance minister of the kingdom. He controlled all the finances. I heard the Lord say this morning that there is an influx of finances that God is bringing into this house that you can be able to do what has been in your heart. It's not going to be week to week and month to month and, and, and project to project, but I heard the Lord say that He's bringing in those that are not afraid to release what He's put in their hand for the fulfillment of the vision that God has given you, man of God. Do you believe that with me today? And whenever that happens, you're going to be able to open things no one's been able to open in the nation. And you're going to be able to shut things that no one's been able to shut in the nation. I want to pray over you today. Father, I pray today that this word has been heard and this word has been received in a way that Holy Spirit intended to deposit it in our heart. Father, you have such a plan for this house. The people that are in it. Lord, those that are in business, those that are serving in other businesses around this region, Lord God, you have a plan for your kingdom to come in every sphere of society that is here. And Father, the diversity that you have in this house is by no coincidence. You purposed it this way. And Father, I thank you today that we're catching the word. And that Father, your vision and your plan for this house, it has come to a place of launching. Come on, just pray with me in the Spirit. Worthy are you, O God. 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 Hallelujah! Worthy are you, O Lord. Worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Your will be done through this house, oh God. Father, your will be done through this house. Father, open doors for them that could not ever be opened any other way. And Father, shut some doors that need to be shut. 
Father, cause your will and cause your glory, dear God, that you've deposited in this place to begin to break through the ceiling that has been over it. For, Father, this is the time that your glory is designed to shine forth as a beam of light into the heavens. Father, thank you today. Thank you today. Thank you today that you're releasing gifts from this house. You've been raising the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, and you're ready to release these gifts into this community into this region, into this state, into this nation, Father God. I thank you, God, that this has been a hidden gem that you've had. It's been a treasure in a box, but you're opening the box and you're lifting the lid and the community, the state, and the nation will begin to see the treasure. They'll be drawn to it, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your glory shine like the sun from this place. Glory to your name. Father, you're shifting this house. You're causing this house to catch another gear. Whew. Apostle Neil, I hear the Lord saying to my heart this morning that you're going to begin to see men who pastor churches in other areas begin to redefine or allow Father to redefine who they are in the body. And you're going to see men resigning from other places, coming into this place to be healed and rightfully positioned. You're going to see men and women who have led congregations in other parts of the nation say, God is leading me to this house so that I could be rightly positioned and even at times rightly sent out into the nation to complete God's assignment that He has on my life. God is going to begin to marry vision with vision and vision with vision and vision with vision within this house. And the Lord says what you saw in the latter years is not going to compare what He's getting ready to release through you now. You will not be one that will have to go and go and go and go, but you will see the sons begin to be gathered, and you will begin to sin and sin and sin and sin and sin. For as you went before, you sowed seed. As you went before, you plowed ground. But God said you're in the season of picking fruit, and you're going to begin to sin, 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 sin to the nation and the nations of the world from this house. Glory to your name. And those that come to you, they're going to say, I'm broken. They're going to say, I am worn out. I am empty. I have nothing else. And you will say to them, no, you're not, you're not broken. You're not empty. You're not worn out. You have been misaligned. You have been misaligned. And you, you function in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a positioning and a gifting that you did not carry and you did not have. You've been misaligned. And you will say to them, I'm going to pop you back into the rightful place like a bone has been out of joint. I'm going to pop you back into the rightful place and you're going to see a strength release through you. You're going to see a strength come into you that you have not had before and you will begin to function as God intended for you to function and you will bring a supply into the body that causes itself to become strong. And when these men and these women come and they've been out of alignment and you pop them back into their rightful place, instantly there's healing. Instantly there's strength. Instantly there will be function that they've been called to function in. And they won't need counseling. They won't need therapy. They won't need all of the prayer and deliverance. It only is because they have been misaligned. So Father... Open the gate for these men and women to come for alignment. God is bringing a favor in your life 
into the halls of government. Even this house, he's bringing a favor in the halls of government. There are going to be issues that are going to burn in your heart. And the Lord says that you're going to be eating dinner in places and find yourself in front of those that are politicians. And God's going to say to them, meet that man, he's important. And they're going to come over to you and meet you and you're going to be able to instantly bond with them and speak into their life. Father, I give you praise. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you today that this church is not going to miss what you've called it to. Mm. Thank you, Father. Favor, Lord. Misharababakaya. This is what I feel to do this morning. We got, we got enough time? Okay. If you're sick today in your body and you need a healing in your body, just lift up your hand. Amen. And now stand to your feet if you need healing today. Thank you, Lord. Someone around them, just begin to stretch your hand out to them. Touch them if you can. Father, today we just thank you for healing. We thank you today, Father God, that your word says that healing is the children's bread. <laughs> Father, your word says in Psalms 1, uh, 120 and verse 7 that you sent your word, you healed our diseases, you delivered us from our destruction. Father, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. And Father, today we just pull out of that covenant today healing, and I decree today healing in every physical body in this place. And that Father, infirmity has no more authority. You must go from their bodies in Jesus' name. Sickness be gone, infirmity be gone in the name of Jesus. And I speak to these bodies and I say now, line up according to the Word of God. Be healed now and be made whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, just begin to, out of your mouth. Just begin to worship Him and thank Him for what He's doing. <clears throat> thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. 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 I give you praise, Father. Healing. Healing in Jesus' name. 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 Healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Yeah, God's healing night right now. He's touching some of you. You're actually feeling physical change in your bodies right now. I release that, Lord. I take authority today over the spirit of oppression. And I decree you will no longer come against the minds of those you're touching in this place today. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and I command you to leave now. Thank you, Father. 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 You know, when you're moving and you move in the prophetic, you can prophesy a lot. But sometimes the Lord doesn't allow us to speak everything we see and that we hear so that the word that He spoke today that was prophetic could sink in and it wouldn't be watered down in any way from you running with it. Does that make sense today? I know some of you today, you came, you said, I want a prophetic word. I want a personal prophetic word from God. And that's good and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But Apostle Neil, I just feel today that this preached word was the prophetic word for this house. And that it needs to just let root go deep. Is that okay? And so God may open up another opportunity. I don't know if He's going to let me come back or not. But... Uh, <laughs> God will open up another opportunity for us to be together some way. If not, He'll bring someone else into your life 
to speak that word to you. Is that okay? So let's just give the Lord a big praise right now.